Tokyo's Revenge was a rapper who blew up off of TikTok near the end of 2019 and well into 2020. He had two songs doing amazing numbers at the exact same time, which were Good Morning Tokyo and Thought. I'm like, Whoa. Tokyo's Revenge probably had the biggest potential out of any upcoming artist from that era, but unfortunately peaked three years ago. From controversies about him copying other artists to alleged disturbing crimes, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what happened to Tokyo's Revenge. This video hits close to home personally, and I may run the risk of getting this video taken down, but more on that later. But if you end up enjoying this style of video, consider subscribing. Tokyo's Revenge got his initial start on SoundCloud, Wanna break from the way before he blew up off of TikTok. His songs, Yes Indeed Freestyle, Brand new beats on both knees, she Midnight, Happy Single Midnight, and one of my personal favorite songs from Tokyo, Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, how on the pussy? Yeah. Talk a bit, giddy up, go for my sex tape. It's the next video. So I told the bitch you were bad like a billy goat. Gave him a huge look in the underground scene. Tokyo would then drop a double-sided EP called Midnight, with only side B making it onto streaming services. But little did Tokyo know, this EP would change his life. As we mentioned in the intro, Good Morning Tokyo and Thought were the two songs that blew Tokyo into the mainstream. Good Morning Tokyo reminded a lot of people of XXX and Tashion which would land him even more clicks due to the controversy around this comparison being so close to the recent death of X. And to be honest, I never really thought Tokyo was a clone. He was definitely inspired, but definitely had a talent of his own. With that, Tokyo saw the hype and immediately capitalized on the success by dropping his songs Gotham, Body Count with Josiah, we at your house cause you ain't coming out. Mm -mm. What's the body count? And irresponsible, which was put in the new Madden game at the time. Are you irresponsible without your money or not? Thought he had a plan, but we gon' foil his plot. Bro was getting even crazier cosigns from people like the Kid Leroy and I'm Dante, who was reacting to his songs like a madman. <laughs> 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 And was even rumored to have songs with Trippy Red. After dropping Hellbent with Kid Leroy, he wasted no time with dropping his 7 EP, which was an EP with 7 songs, which included a highly anticipated snippet, Bulletproof. Bitch, I feel bulletproof, fuck a casket, knife in a gun, fight, bitch, I'm stabbing. And Dead Man's Wonderland, which I literally performed at a talent show last year. They see my stress, but I see the best and I see the future. <laughs> To say this man was talented will be a goddamn understatement. He'd eventually drop his Lilium EP with features from The Holiday and fucking 24K Golden. 2021 could have been the year we saw Tokyo reach a success he'd never had before. But little did we know, Tokyo was allegedly doing some very illegal things under everybody's noses. In February 2021, shit changed for the worse. A girl by the name of Zaza dropped grooming allegations on him. Allegedly, when she was a sophomore in high school, and Tokyo was 20 fucking two, he was talking to this girl about his kinks on FaceTime and being absolutely down bad in every single conversation they had. Like shit, I was a sophomore at the time when this shit dropped. I was sitting there like, huh? He can't be that ass, bro. Like my nigga, what is you talking about? Are you verified account too? That's crazy. He apologized to Zaza on Instagram and was confronted in the your rage discord out of all places on your 18th birthday i'm going to rearrange your stomach yes or no is that not me? that's for sure it's literally from my is that not me? yes or no Bruh. yes and he left that kid's a pedal at the time i genuinely didn't want to believe it i mean i just passionately told y'all about how much i was inspired by everything this man created so to be shown that my inspiration was a terrible person was not how i wanted my 2021 to start and for a long time i was just in denial i'm dante and blackie speaks would go on to talk about these allegations until they were forced to delete their videos because Tokyo's label threatened to take legal action against them, which is why I mentioned it earlier, which definitely left a sour taste in their mouth. But I continued to stream his music because like I was just straight in denial. I stayed active on Tokyo's Reddit for some time, hoping that this nigga would make a statement. And after months of silence, something leaked onto the Reddit that Tokyo might've actually been set up and that the whole situation was fake with actual Dropbox evidence. The Dropbox alleged that Zaza was a manipulator. She had apparently faked sides and overdosed for attention and was actually caught screenshotting Tokyo Tokyo out of context. She even lied about the age difference. Charges were never pressed against him, and the members who were exposing Tokyo in that Discord were actually exposed to be doing the exact same thing they accused him of, and they were potentially paid off to set him up. There was an alleged setup that Tokyo's close collaborators were being paid to turn against him. It was fucking insane. And Tokyo's revenge would eventually start poking his head through the crack and would finally start speaking on the allegations damn near eight months later. Tokyo released a very vague response to the allegations, which literally addressed nothing. But a snippet called Malcolm in the Middle had been surfacing online for a few months, which was a song where he actually talks about the situation and had lyrics dissing Josiah. You niggas pump, bitch, I'm lost, especially so. Cause I had love for you, it's tragic. I'm Dante. Same thing for cousin, I'm bad. Then you gonna talk about that shit and present it back. And his close producer friend, Matthias Tyner. 
could catch a dick to an open mouth. People didn't think this song was gonna drop due to it being a direct response to the controversy. I'm Dante and Tokyo were even posting each other on their stories again, so I thought everything was good again. Side! On January 7th, 2022, In the Middle dropped and marked the return of Tokyo's Revenge. As a fan, I thought I did a great job staying loyal to the artists who had been put under so much fire. I felt good sticking to my gut in this situation. I thought I was finally gonna be able to witness the comeback of Tokyo's Revenge. But unfortunately, in just a few short months, that fantasy of mine was shattered completely. On September 2nd, Tokyo released an announcement asking everyone to join VC as he needed to address a few things. He was talking about new allegations that had surfaced, which I was confused about. I joined to him downplaying the entire thing in VC. And he found out that she was cap, and then he said he was gonna talk, and, da -da -da -da. and he allowed fans to unmute and ask questions. I was one of these fans. I confronted him about his silence. If he was supposed to be innocent, why the fuck did he stay silent? I hate when I'm like listening to your music and then the first impression that I get, niggas just hate you. Then I gotta go through the whole monologue where I'm like, no, this and this and that. No, not, yeah, I know. At the same time, right, you gotta recognize the position I'm in. I'd look like a dick if I went around just name dropping niggas and how they did me dirty, as opposed to just focusing on myself. I feel like it's but, like perceptions like important and everything. If people are gonna use that situation and only talk about that situation, but then when you come out with a statement, don't talk about it at all. I feel like that's even unfair. though they said that. You're right, you're right. It's not yeah, fair. I feel, I feel like it should be a responsibility where it's like, all right, fuck, I'm gonna come out and say. It, and say, at, and say at the, right, I guess that's what I'm doing now. Defending myself, I can do that. I'm doing it right now. Being overly aggressive about it, I could give a fuck. You know what I mean? Right there. Right as I was about to stop recording, a new document was sent into the chat. But just as people started questioning him, Tokyo left the voice chat. In this document, the victim explains that they met Tokyo on August 4, 2016. They started dating when she just started 8th grade at 13 years old. And this nigga had already graduated high school. The victim broke up with him a little after they turned 17 in May 2020. And she alleged that he cheated on her with more underage people. They met in person in May 2018 and performed a sexual things that I don't even want to fucking repeat. They had phone sex, debated with each other on the phone, and he had underage of her on his phone. There were even more allegations of him, apparently, having relationships with six other minors. <laughs> what the fuck? It's a lot of shit with a lot of evidence backing it up, and you can pause the video if you'd like to read the full thing. I just wanted to make a video about this because I felt like other videos talking about this topic didn't include most of the information I put here. He still continues to make big moves, like getting his music put in movies like Assassin and fucking and Morbius of all things, but it's yet to firmly give a justified response to any of this shit. This story was told from my perspective, a fan who just wanted to support their favorite artist during their toughest time. I'm sure many fans have been in this awkward position before. I don't support or endorse anything that Tokyo's Revenge has done or will probably repeat in the future, but I don't want to leave this video off on a sad note, so you excuse me? Spaghetti noodle, Minecraft spider, volcano looking goofy ass dreads. Nigga groomed his hair almost as much as he allegedly groomed those miners. Nigga's head shaped like a damn coffee bean. Put it on these filters to impress all the elementary school kids on his goddamn phone. Call this nigga the new age R. Kelly. Map loving, Snapchat having. I can't be more than 50 meters from a school looking ass. Nigga, you're done. Bro was really named fucking Garth. And that's what happened to the motherfucker named Tokyo's Revenge. Oh,